Hi, you guys, and welcome back. I'm Sandra D, the main event. Today, we are not going to be talking about hair. We are not going to be talking about food. We are talking about the narcissist. Now, today, we're going to talk about three techniques that the narcissist always use. One is going to be love bombing. Now, love bombing is how they use this intel to get information about you to fill in the blanks of the things that you have not been getting from previous relationships. Now, I like to call the love bombing stage as the interviewing stage. You know, when you go on a job interview and you looking up the company, you doing your research and they have questions, you have questions, but both of you guys are filling in the blank to see if this position or this company is a right fit for you or if the company feels like you're a right candidate. Okay, so this is where the love bombing comes in. Now, when they met you, like I told you, they already been watching you. Okay, they were stalking you already from the gate. You just didn't recognize and you did not understand what was going on at the time. Okay, so when they approach you, they already know certain things about you. Okay, which is why they mirror you in the first place. That is to help you to get your guard down to make it more easier for them to approach you, which is why they come to you like a little timid, a little shy, you know, non-threatening, if you will. I like to call it, if you guys seen the five heartbeats, you remember when the brothers of the five heartbeats and they was like, let's play shy brother. Okay, well, shy brother is a way of a person pretending to be non-threatening, but all in all, they're a player. Okay. So they came at you in the love bombing stage doing an interview. And then when they approach you in a non-threatening way for you not to be able to see who they really are, they use shy brother. Okay. That's to get personal intel to fill in the blanks so that they can go ahead and deceive you, con you. You got to remember you're dealing with a professional here. Okay. Now, the next phase that they came at is this part is called the devouring stage. Okay. It's part number two. Now, in this stage, you started seeing some things that just didn't add up. He was like, something ain't right with what you're saying. So what they did was they had to throw some things at you by gaslighting you and said, I never said that or I didn't mean it that way. You misunderstood what I was saying. Now, this is to get you off of their tail because they realize that what they are doing is in jeopardy. OK, so when they come and gaslight you, they know that pretty soon the gig is up. OK. So they want to give you, like I told you guys in a video before, reasonable doubt to get you to doubt yourself and what you know is true to receive a lie so that they want you to believe what they have said, which is a lie, but they are trying to present it as being true. OK, now when that starts happening is when you start catching those blue clues like something is not cool here, something is not right here and you're calling them out. So when you start calling them out, this is when they start looking at you as a threat because they revert back to the traumatized that 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 traumatized thing that happened to them when they was a kid. OK, so now they got to put their guard up. OK, and they got to try to put you in a bad light to make it seem like you misunderstood what they're saying. But you never misunderstood in the first place. You was right. OK, now the third thing that happens, this is when they sit here and discard you. This is when they act like they don't want to talk to you. They give you the silent treatment. You know, if you reach out, you don't get no response. So that's on purpose because they want you to be on a hunt for them. Like you looking for Waldo in one of those pictures, like where's Waldo? Where's Waldo? You know what I'm saying? So this is why these things are created and they use these things as a way to be able to continue to manipulate, to continue the game. OK, to try to keep you in place, OK, to keep you off of what you know is true. But they're if they're they're not validating what you're saying that is true because they don't want to get caught. Okay, so you got to remember that love bombing, 
That's an interview to fill in the blanks, to figure out what makes you tick, to give you what you're missing. Once they get their hooks in you or you start figuring out what's going on, they will take you to the devouring stage. Okay. Now, sometimes the devouring stage ain't because you caught them in something. It's because they looking to see who else they can deceive and they need to sit here and put you on ice, if you will. Put you on the shelf, if you will. You know, that's where that discard comes from. So that when they pop back up, you know, that's when you got all these questions and like what happened, where'd you go, things that in, in that nature. Because that time space that they do, they're setting up somebody else so that they can have that person have you and whoever else that they can get their little greedy hands on. You got to remember these are the three techniques that they use like clockwork and it never fails. Now, when it does start failing is when you's like, I know I'm being played. I know this ain't cool. I know this ain't right. Now, sometimes when you get into that discard stage and you really realize, hey, this person been playing my games with me, you know, that's when you be like, something ain't cool. So then this is when they'll go up. And knowing that they're about to get caught, they'll do a smear campaign and try to put you in a bad light, okay? So that when you do confront them, if you confront them, this is when they, they'll go out and you emotional, or if you're in an emotional state, like how could you do this X, Y, and Z, they'll tell the next person, that they done deceived and told them, I told you something wasn't right with them. I told you this is why I wasn't in there. This is why I left. Now, they do that because they trying to secure the other person that they deceive while they trying to make sure they let you go and put you on ice. Okay. Now, when they put you on ice, which is being discard, they actually are putting you on a shelf. They place you on a shelf. Because they want to see if they can come back later to manipulate you with all these three things that I mentioned before. So they're going to come back with the love bombing. They may even apologize. They may even say they miss you. They may even come up with some type of, they got some type of emergency. Or, you know, hey, I left something at your house. Can I come get it? Or you left these items at my house. Can you come get it? The only thing that is, is for them to re-secure that hook in you to make you come back to go through that whole process all over again. Because the whole reason why you're there in the first place is so that they can take advantage of you because they want to abuse you and they want to ref they want to put what their trauma was on you okay remember i told you it's a switcheroo they want to be you and to avoid the trauma that they have gone through in their lives and put it all on you okay while they going out trying to look like a new shiny penny Okay, but the whole thing about it is it always backfires because you can never walk in somebody else's shoes. Okay, you can never be somebody else that you wasn't designed to be. Okay, this is why it always backfires. Not only that is that when you are deceiving someone and you're pretending to be something that you're not, you're going to always get exposed because that's not who you are. Now, there are no perfect people, but there are people who are striving to be better not to con someone okay not to manipulate someone you want to be a better version of yourself okay you always want to be up in your game up in your swag improving your skills and your talents because you are representing you and you don't want to have anything that's fake you always want to shine like a diamond and not be no cuba saconian who the hell wants a fake ass diamond unless you got a license to pretend? Don't nobody want that. Now, if you do want that, I ain't knocking you because who don't like costume jewelry? But if it ain't Halloween and 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 if it's not like um some type of get together where you going out and you having a good time at an event and you can't afford the real bling bling. Then I can understand you getting the costume jury because, hey, that's part of the darn gone event. Okay. But now don't nobody want somebody that's pretending to be something that they not. This is why it didn't work out. Okay. Now the next thing I want to address is the young, the young man who made a comment who said, Hey, 
you know, I saw your video and I seen what you said about therapy, but the therapy back backfired on me. Let me tell you something, sir. And any of my young ladies that's out here listening, you cannot make a narcissist go to therapy. Okay? Because if it was your idea, they're going to resent it. And when they get there, they're going to figure out how they can flip the script to put you in a bad scenario. The only time therapy will really work for a narcissist is when you go no contact. You don't care about the hoovers that they try to bring to the table, which is several. But the whole purpose and the point of a hoover is to suck you back into the repeat of the abuse and the manipulation that they have already set forward. You can't help someone that doesn't want to be helped. This is why they have to come to themselves. And even when they get the therapy, okay, you don't have to give them another opportunity or a shot or a chance. You do not. Because once somebody tear their draws with you, that's a wrap. So please understand when I tell you, you do not have to receive no phone calls, no texts. Make sure you block them on your social media. But I'm also going to let you know this. They're going to find a way to create a fake page so that they can have all eyes on me. So just know this. Okay, they're going to find a way to, to, to see what you're doing, to see what's popping, what's going on in your life. They want to see if what they did to you worked. But when they see that what they did to you didn't work, but you came out better than your former, oh, child, that's when they hurt. Because at the end of the day, they wanted you to hurt like they are hurting. You got to remember, they're insecure. They are stuck in the past. And they never healed from what someone had did to them as a child. So when you get into a relationship with these people, their whole motive and agenda is to make you suffer, to make you miserable. Remember, misery loves company because they don't want to do the work because they figured out a way to play a victim. That victim mentality works for them, but it doesn't work for you because you're not a victim. You've been victimized, but you're not a victim. You are willing to do the work because you recognize and realize that you was conned by a con artist. Did it hurt? Hell yeah, it hurt it. It did, but that was their intent. But it did not destroy the essence of who you are because you came out even better. You came out educated. You came up setting up boundaries. You recognize and realize that this person was a whole lie. And you found out the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. Now, there's another young lady who said, hey, <laughs> I didn't find out that I was in a relationship with a narcissist until I got married. Sometimes that's how it's designed. So when you're in that love bombing stage and they trying to figure out what makes you tick and to fill in the blanks to give you what you was missing. That's when they go full speed ahead. And everything is fast paced. It's like the fast and the furious. It's like you boom. But you didn't do no fact checks. Because you thought that this person that was presenting themselves was the best thing since sliced bread. And they was. Because they was representing you. You just didn't understand the trick. You didn't understand how they conned you. You didn't understand the technique that was going on behind the scenes to get you in position to fall and get the bait. That's how it works. So remember, love bombing, it ain't nothing but an interview. To figure out what's going on in your life to see how they can fill in the blanks and be that person that you were looking for. Okay? Two. They did this the devouring of you so that they could chip away at your confidence. At the essence of who you are to plant reasonable doubt. 
to get you emotional, to get you off balance, to make you feel like you don't know what you're doing, but you've been right all along and been knowing what you're doing. But that narcissist had to do these things because it's called a switcheroo. The switch is they wanted to become you and they wanted you to become them. They wanted you to switch place. You ever seen that movie, Freaky Friday? Okay, where the mother and the daughter switch place. That's what they wanted to do with you, which is why you were selected. You have a destiny, something so awesome and great about you that they wanted for themselves. You just didn't recognize and see how valuable you were. But when you went through this lesson, it turned out for a blessing in disguise because now you're on top of your game and can't nobody or nothing stop you from your destiny. All right, you guys, I'll see you in the next video and I hope that this has helped someone. All right, y'all be blessed.